My name's Sasha Pete, and I'm joined by a fantastic individual. This man played both in the old NSL and A-League. None other than the great Norm Sekolovsky. Welcome, Norm, to this conversation. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me, and um, really good to be catching up in this forum. Awesome. So tell us, Norm, how did you fall in love with our great game? Um, I suppose the initial answer or the short answer is obviously mum and dad migrated here from Macedonia in the late 60s, early 70s, and um, everything that they knew in reference to sport was uh, was football. Um, so that's what they both played um, back in their motherland and very quickly, that's that's sort of what, what we had around the backyard and inside the house, we were, we were kicking soccer balls and, and playing around with them in the backyard and front yard with my sister at a very young age. So um, w- w- one thing that dad initially wanted us to do, uh, both my sister and I, is to be involved in sport full stop, purely because of the, um, the social exercise it provides and, you know, keeping us out of trouble and, you know, teaching you really good things that are transferable in life. So, yeah, that's, that's I suppose, has, how, how the, the passion for football um, kicked off. And, uh, you know, as you progressed your, into your senior career, you ended up uh, playing in the back line. But, you know, as a, as a junior, where did you gravitate to on the pitch? Um, so initially I started off as an attacking footballer. Um, so a left wing, um, the, you know, in, in a three or up front as a striker. So used to score a lot of goals at, at junior level, um, which was brilliant. I really enjoyed that. And like most kids, scoring goal is, is the best thing, best thing in the world, especially um, in your younger years. So, yeah, probably for for most part of my... Um, I'm just trying to think probably up until uh, 13, 14, for all the time prior to that, I was, yeah, an attacking left wing or, or a striker of sorts. Oh, that's brilliant. So uh, what was your first junior club? Uh, Springy City, out in, uh, out in the southeast. And so you grew up in the area? Uh, Dandenong born um, and grew up in, in Keysborough, yeah, in the, in the family home. Actually, a, a few doors down from the Grella family, so we were, uh, we were very close. Uh, any, uh, like, uh, school rivalry or did you play in uh, was similar vintage or? Oh, with, uh, I think Vin, I was closest to, to Vinny Grella, uh, but he was, I think, three two or three years older, maybe, maybe even more. So the only time I used to see Vinny's, I, used, I think they, the boys used to go to private schools. We weren't that fortunate. We were just at Chandler Primary, uh, but we used to walk the four or five kilometres, whatever it was, and every time we'd come back, I'd see Vince's school bag up against the, the brick fence and be on, he'd be on the street, left foot, right foot, um, just knock, knocking the ball up against the, against the brick wall. How brilliant is that? And so uh, Springvale City for, um, you said, uh, how long How long did you, you start it then? To, to yeah, what uh, age? Springy, you... Springy City, uh, just trying to think back, probably all the way up until under 13s, I think, 13s, 14s. Um, then a little cameo appearance at Moorabbin, um, who was part of the... I'm just trying to think the competitive leagues, the super leagues, I think. Super that league, yeah. To pull it back then. Yeah. And then from, from a rabbin, um, that's when all the, you know, things started to get serious in terms of rep football and regional squads and um, and state squads and things like that. And I think I I had my first VPL debut as a 15-year-old, maybe, from, from memory. Wow. There, there or thereabouts. So my first stint at senior footy, uh, which was pretty exciting as well as a, as a, as a young lad. And so, and that was for? For Moorabbin as well, for Moorabbin City. It was a small stint that they had in the old BPL. Yeah. Uh, a very short one. But, um, yeah, that's where, uh, where I made my debut in the old, the old BPL now. That's brilliant. And how old did you say? I think 15 from memory. Wow. From memory, yeah. So up front, um, getting absolutely battered, as I'm sure you can appreciate in, uh, in old school footy. But... Um, you just had to learn quickly. Um, and it was, uh, it was a really, really good experience for me in terms of um, potentially being one step away from getting involved in, you know, the old NSL. And, and so who were your influences through that early time? So you mentioned your parents. 
so uh, how how did they influence your your, your footballing journey? Uh, it's it was like I really enjoyed watching Serie A at the time, and um, I followed AC Milan quite aggressively uh, during the the Van Basten era, uh, Ruud Hullet. Um, so these are the guys that I used to watch. In terms of you know what inspired me, I'll still probably turn the mirror inwards and look back at my family, and like mm-hmm. and, and my parents, and you think about the sacrifice that I suppose a lot of Europeans made to to come to Australia for a better life and. I remember the things like dad, you know, driving me all around Victoria to get to games with, with mum. Mm. I remember waiting until um, 7.30 or 8 o'clock, you know, after dad finished overtime doing, you know, he'd, he'd pinch any little bit of overtime he could just to support his family. Um, so I suppose this was a big part of my inspiration um, as a kid. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's funny because, I don't know if a lot of young kids these days might have that same um, experience purely because they're second or third generation. You know, we've done a little bit better than our parents have. And um, so life's a little bit more comfortable uh, for them. However, at that point, I I I could see what my parents were going through and how hard they were working to to provide for us as a family. Mm -hmm. So I thought this was, you know, at least giving something back to to mum and dad, dad in particular. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you said um, sort of in your sort of middle teen uh, years, or later teen years, you, you're making rep rep squads. So the, they had regionals back yeah. back then and then in state squads. Did you make any of those sides? Yeah, yeah. So I think from around sort of 13, 14, started to make the regional, the regional sides. Um, with the Vic team, I think under 14s, for the under 14 year, I got uh, dropped in the, um, the last cutoff before they went to national championships. And I still remember the day I was bawling my eyes out after, um, uh, after I got given the news and my old man um, put his arm around me and he said, you know, well, why are you crying? And I said, I'm, I'm gutted. I've, you know, I filthied right up. <laughs> I dirtied up big time and said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going. I didn't get selected. He goes, that's all right. He goes, that's one coach's opinion. He goes, all, all you have to do is focus um, on what you're doing day to day and improve um, where you might have some gaps in your game. Um, he goes, and we go again next year. So it, 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 that, that was brilliant. Um, the following year, uh, if we fast forward one year, I got selected into that Victorian side under 15s. I think we finished runner up at Park Lee at the national championships. Um, there were a couple of boys that got scouted um, uh, by Word of Bremen at the time, Joey Diorio and Fabulatary, and I think they had an eye on myself as well. Um, got into the other 17 Joey squad off the back of that tournament, VIS scholarship. So things started to happen really, really quickly. Uh, it was almost, you know, like, like a, a, a breakout, um, a breakout year. It's interesting how the the um, maybe it's the reason why some people kick on. It's that sort of that setback, and then being able to come back. From that um, yeah. accelerates your, your yeah. learning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, representing, uh, putting on, you know, getting the getting kitted out in in yellow and green. How does that feel like? Oh, it's yeah. I, st- I still remember the letters. Um, I think it was Soccer Australia back then. Yeah. You know, yep. The taglines changed so many times over the years. I think it was we used to get the the official letter would would come in. Um, and it was like, you know, it was like getting the Powerball and five straight. You know, it was like it was like winning lottery, and mm. um, not just for myself. Like even, you know, seeing mum and dad and being around the dinner table, opening up the letter, um, it was pretty emotional, right? But you know, the, the opportunity to be part of um, youth team, you know, uh, national duties was was something that was really special. Um, had a lot of injuries uh, over the course of that journey as well. So I didn't end up going to that World Cup where um, they did really well, I think, came runners-up to, to New Zealand. Uh, but again, just the whole experience of being away on camp, um, you know, with what essentially was the best of the best within our within our age group was mm. was priceless in, t- in terms of that journey and, and what it teaches you as a, as a footballer, A, and B, as a person is... Is um is absolutely huge. So um, very privileged to have um to have gone through that 
and experience oh, that. And so walk us through. So where, 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 from Moorabbin, where, where, where do you end up going? Um, so from Moorabbin, I think we've got, we've got the rep, rep football there. Um, then there's a fair bit, a fair, fair bit of time spent with the, with the VIS okay. over the course of, of a year or two. Uh, with Ernie Merrick um, at, at the at the football. Was Ian program. Greener also there at the same yeah, time? Yeah, Ian Greener was around, um, the great man. So he was floating around there. So did quite well with the VIS. And I was sort of bouncing, you know, bouncing around from VIS to Joey's camps du- during this period. Um, and then, uh, like, I almost felt comfortable at, um, at that youth league level uh, I wanted to try expose myself to some form of, of senior footy. Um, mm-hmm. So I joined Oakley Cannons. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think maybe as a 16 year old or just, you know, just, you know, 16 in a couple of months. I can't remember yeah. clearly, uh, but played up front there with Aki as coach, Aki El um, yeah. in the state one. Ended up getting promoted that year, was cl- scored close to a goal a game for the 10 or 11 games. Um, which was which was really good, and um, off the back of that senior experience, uh, I think it was my uncle at the time, who was my junior coach at Springwell City, um, speaking to some contacts at Gippsland Falcons to mm-hmm. uh, potentially look at going there. So um, that's that's how that uh, sort of transition from that youth from that youth setup going into senior football and. I suppose again, it, it's it's another. You want to try level up. I think yes. that as, as you're going, and I always tell my 11 year old, you know, try challenge yourself and not, not, you know, park football to one side. Even when you're at school and you know, in in, in all um, areas of life, try challenge yourself and, and level up if you can. Um, and if you can't, well, you know, train a little bit more. You know, educate yourself a little bit more, and then and and then take that next step. So. The, the one good thing, uh, the, what, what uh, the stories I hear about people who played out at Morwell um, was about the, the car rides. Yeah. So, so who are you with in that, the year that you were there or so? Like what, what were the, what, who, who, was, who was doing the travel from Melbourne yeah. to Gippsland yeah. and back? All right. So Mehmet Jarakovic was, was the captain. So it's, he's not a bad guy to have in the car, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not a bad captain to be, uh, to be steering the ship. Uh, big Bojo Jevjevic um, in yes, goals. Great keeper. Yeah. Uh, Brian Macker, McNichol with the, the blonde locks. You know, he had a bit of, uh, what's his name about him? Warwick Kappa. He was the Warwick Kappa of the NSL. So, yes. Um, Macker, I'm just trying to think who else was in that car. There, there were a few others. Um, but yeah, that, that were always good, mate. Unbelievable. For me, you're going in as the as the a young, young whipp- whippersnipper. So you sort of keep the mouth shut. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wish I had the experience I do now, even from a banter perspective, to be able to talk some trash, you know, on, on yes. the way in. But the the boys were, uh, were 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 pretty good. That was when we had the Arvo sessions. Otherwise, Jeff Hopkins used to uh, work us pretty uh, pretty aggressively, mate. Considering we were part time footballers, I used to catch up the V line uh, from Dandenong at about seven thirty in the morning for morning sessions. Um, All right, and then and then the the um the older boys that were working would come in for, for, for the for the evening session. So it was so you'd be on a double shift there at uh, at Gippsland. I'd be on a double shift and um to maybe take one step step back uh, after finishing Oakley and I initially got the, the contract uh for, for Gippsland Falcons. It arrived my uncle uh had Chris's carpets out in Keezy and I was I was doing some work for him out at uh, out at the factory in Keezy and I remember the facts coming through. So we're showing our age here when we're talking fax machines, but the fax came through and the contract came uh, came out, and I looked at it, and it my first contract was a hundred bucks a week. Right? Oh, quality, it was Love huge, it. it was massive, like, <laughs> hundred bucks a week, and I picked it up and I thought, what the f- is this? You know, hundred bucks, <laughs> and I've gone over to the old man. I said, Dad, you know, hundred dollars a week. I'm, you know, I've, I've given it the old Billy big time. I'm not going to Gippsland for a <laughs> You know, for a hundred bucks, it's not going to cover this, cover that. And in true ethnic form, uh, my old man gave me a backhander and said, "What are you worried about?" He goes, "You got a roof over your head, right?" He goes, "If you need a car, I'll give you my car." And he goes, "Option C, there's a train at Dandenong. 
right? That'll take you straight to Morwell. And one of the boys will pick you up. So it was it was brilliant to have that influence at the time, just so he could pull my head in um, and just straighten me up a little bit when I needed straight, straightening up. Because yeah, as a young kid, sometimes you think, you know, we've got a saying in Macedonian, you know, gospel te fati say, you know, I don't want to use God's name, but God's grabbed you by the by the the short curly. Curly. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And sometimes you've got that inflatable head, right? Where you mm. just need a it needs deflating, right? And that, that, that mm. that's where the old man was brilliant, and he just sort of leveled me out. Said, "Listen, you've got all the resources there. You know, we're not filthy rich." He goes, "But you know, we're we're behind you." He goes, "Don't worry about the money. The money will come." And mm. you know, he was spot on. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You know, so many, so many kids, you'd probably be able to make double or triple or quadruple playing lower down in the leagues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's brilliant advice. Uh, so any young ones listening. Yeah. Um, so uh, Gippsland, you, 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 you play a little while there and, and then you make the move north. So how yeah. did that come about? So yeah, again, Gippsland was, um, I think, 16, nine months. Made my debut there with Morwell Falcons. I think, no, sorry, Gippsland Falcons were at the time. My last year there were Eastern Pride. And that was literally heading towards the collapse of, unfortunately, both the club at that point in time. And, and um, you know, there, there were rumblings about, you know, what, what might be ahead in terms of um, a, a change in league and a, and a restructure. But did, did well enough. Uh, within the sort of year and a half that I was at Gippsland. I actually ended up going to Weta Bremen. Um, if, if, okay. if, if you want to touch on that in terms of a footballing lesson to the junior Please. Um, community, um, I went to Weta Bremen after my first sort of quarter season with Gippsland Falcons. Okay. So again, this was off the two Aussie boys that were already there. Um, they had obviously had an eye on me at some, some point throughout that um, under-15s championship. Um, so anyway, I ended up going to Werder Bremen at the end of that NSL season. And um, I'll tell the story to most of the young boys at Preston and have over the past uh, five years. But I remember leaving Australia. I was completely unprepared, both from a psychological standpoint, uh, physical, mental, the, the whole lot package deal. I think it was 40-odd um, degrees for the whole week prior to me leaving to Germany. Um, and Germany was obviously minus minus five to minus ten at the time. But Ooh. again, I I sort of got a, a little bit ahead of myself in terms of where I where I thought I was um, at that point in time. And anyway, so I jumped on the plane. Um, this Aussie kid gets off with about another six or seven trialists um, at, at Bremen, and feeling pretty comfortable, uh, uh, you know, about myself and and my chances. And I remember sitting in the changing room, my first, uh, my first session and everything's hanging up, you know, as you'd expect, uh, the miles ahead, you know, 20, 30 years ahead of, of what we were in Australia. And so slightly gobsmacked for starters, but I'm sat down and I'm looking across the changing room and there's a couple of Russian lads there that play in the, in the amateur uh, for, the, for, the, for the reserves, for the Bremen reserves. And they're, they're looking dead at me right, right in, between, in, in between the eyes. And I look left, I look right, I'm thinking... What are these guys looking at? Anyway, we jump on the training track and these guys start belting the crap out of me, basically, um, mm. giving me my initiation uh, for, uh, for, for a better word. Um, and it was, it was a horrific two weeks. Um, it, was, it was a two weeks where I, I learned very quickly how far off I actually was and how much work I actually had to put in you know, upon my return in Australia. Mm. Um, and it was a real mindset shift for me where I realised that um, in order to get, you know, to that European level, um, let's conquer Australia first. Let me get to the top tier in Australia, play consistent football here, and then potentially there might be a chance to entertain the, the, the European dream. But um, it was a really, really good learning curve for me because I, 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 I struggled and um, I remember after the two weeks or two and a half weeks that I was there, um, I knocked on the door to the guy that had organised the, the trial and I said, oh, I don't know what his Vern or Hans or whatever his name was. He goes, I said, oh, so how did I go? And he goes, yeah, Norman. He goes, 
airport Zutfair. And that was it. He closed the door and um, called the cab. And yeah, this, uh, this another six players came and the six players left. And, and, and that was it. So yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, uh, it, and yeah. you probably needed double shin pads, yeah? Double. That, yeah, more, more than double shin. They, they, they kicked they kick the shit out of me. They absolutely mm. kicked the shit out of me. And actually, one, one Turkish boy, obviously a big Turkish population in Germany, in Bremen. One Turkish boy, we're having lunch after the morning session, and he goes, Naum, he goes, he goes, what, what did you think? You were just going to waltz in here, and it was just going to happen. He goes, we're not, you know, he goes, this isn't Australia, mate. He goes, he goes, the wage that I get goes back to Turkey and feeds, you know, he goes, two families, right? Mm. Um, so it was, yeah, it, it was brilliant as a, like I said, yeah. I was 17, 17 year old at the time. It was a massive, uh, massive lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you don't win, you learn. That's uh, yeah. great advice. Yeah. So uh, and then uh, and then the the move to to Wollongong. Wollongong. Yeah. Then then, then the move, move to Wollongong. so come back have have another year with uh, with Eastern Pride at the time. Have a have a really good year. Like that was the year. Even though I went to Perth later on, that was the year Mish Davare. You know, watch watch me play an unbelievable game versus Robbie Trykovsky. Um, which is one of the reasons why I signed, you know, years, years later. But um, yeah, went to Wollongong um, after that year. I'm just trying to think 2000 or 2001. Again, playing up front with uh, Stuart Young, um, who was an absolute gun. This guy took me in like a cup favourite. I'd, I'd never met the bloke. He, I remember landing, um, heading down to their headquarters, which was a, a shed. It was a portable at the back of. I'm just trying to think of the park in Wollongong. I've gone blank. Who was coaching there at the time? Uh, Ron Ronnie Smith. Oh wow. Yeah. Ron. What was that experience like? So I hear nothing but good things. What what, what uh, was Ron, Ron was an absolute jet. He was an absolute jet. Uh, great bloke. Um, really backed the young lads in actually, which was probably um, um, quite unusual. Um, considering it was it was a league full of um, you know seasonal and seasoned campaigners you know of, of a certain vintage, so I was really lucky that um, not only did you know I get a, a contract interstate for an NSL club, uh, but he gave me good game time. Absolutely uh, loved me and, and and backed me in. So really gave me an opportunity to play consistent senior football week in week out alongside Stuart Young, who was one of the um, you know, top strikers back then. So, yeah. and who'd you room with? So, when you travelled, now you're testing me uh, with with uh, Wollongong. I don't know. It might have been Youngie. I'm not too sure. I- I'm not too sure if they if they swapped the rooms as well. Like they might have swapped the rooms back then. But now, now you yeah, now you're really testing uh, um, testing okay, my age, so, mate. Yeah. The uh, so uh, did, did you did you have to share when you um, when you were at Perth? Or did you get your own? Yeah, room? yeah, absolutely. Okay, so when you're at Perth, who did you who did you share with? Uh the big bear, Alex Viteski. Um, okay. Yeah. So well, was your was your room quiet or loud or? I was. My room was was sorry. My half of the room was clean, and then the bear, as I like to refer to him, or the, the sloth, um, it was just chaos. It was just shit everywhere. So, <laughs> and I I I'd filthy up. You know, I I'd left I'd left. Melbourne at a very young age, right? At like seven, uh, 18, 19 to go to Wollongong. So I used to make my bed, you know, pack my, stuff pack away. my clothes up. There was, you order. know, yeah, there was order. And then there was Alex Bukeski. There was a bed. And he was just, mate, there was crap everywhere. Clothes, a bag open, a uh, packet of chips, whatever it was. And I said, big man, you gotta, you got to sort your shit out, yeah? We need a, <laughs> we need a little bit of order. I'm not talking CCP um, order, <laughs> but, you know, a, a little bit. <laughs> yeah brilliant um so um you got you got a you got on the score sheet uh at Wollongong you spent a couple of seasons there I mean so I mean but the the uh that would have been in terms of the, the likes of your South Melbournes or your Marconis you know they would have they would have the, the budget at Wollongong would have been you know a fraction of those glamour clubs so yeah. what was it like when you when you when you're playing against those bigger clubs like a, a South Melbourne or a Marconi, yeah. were they the 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 bigger games? That, that, yeah, that, that were the um, yeah. 
the way I look at it now, and it, like even back, they were the benchmark games. You know, they were the games you wanted to do well in, um, and they were a challenge, not just for myself, but for the club and and the team as a whole. So, you know, and that's what we always saw it as. And it's like now when people play us with, with Preston, you know, everyone wants to come to BT Connor Reserve and and you know and kick the shit out of us and, and win and, and get whatever they can. So that's that's what it felt like playing with these types of clubs, you know, going out to um, to South to Bob Jane or, um, you know, out at, out at Marconi. Um, so they were, they were really good. My cousin Ray actually played at South Melbourne. At the, we were there at, in, in the NSL during the, the same time. So it was always nice to, to play um, against him as well. But it was like... Mm. You know, it's like we were the Fords and the Holdens and they were the Mercs and the Audis, yes. right? So, and that's, you know, I suppose the budgets reflected that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that was the imbalance of what the old NSL was. Yes. Yeah, you, you had clubs that had a little bit more capital versus clubs that were a little bit more um, yeah. reserved. The, I mean, of the goals that you scored at Wollongong, did any come to mind that you think, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know... I'll, if I could only be, so we're now coming on twenty years, right? Jesus. So it's so it's twenty. You know, you're you're a you're a you're a twenty year old now. Um, yeah. You know, still, yeah. So sorry to wind back the clock. No, it's not. please. <laughs> but uh, but uh, any goals that you remember of in the in your couple of seasons there? Um, I'm just trying to think. There was a pretty good one against the the strikers. Um, it was a pretty good goal against Brisbane Strikers. I think Ronnie had, they were preparing the sign for me to um, to come off, to sub me off. And I just... <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Lovely. Yeah, it was, it was, it was in the, I'm pretty sure it was in the back end of the second <laughs> half. But um, they were pre- preparing the paperwork uh, as they would have been back back then. And I think Dino Man- Manilo has put in a tackle and it's, it's, um, it's bounced forward. And yeah, I've collected it and then put it I think sort of semi semi top corner the right right hand side, but there's uh there's Did probably you still a, get subbed? sorry you still got Did... subbed yeah <laughs> oh, I couldn't yeah I couldn't buy a goal prior to that like I I had chance after chance and clearly I'd been having one right uh, from, from that perspective um so it was about to drag me but uh yeah it was a, it, it was a nice way nice way to finish finish the night but pro- probably a more memorable goal was one against Northern Spirit that I um that I set up for Stuart Young where I just remember putting the afterburners on out wide and I sort of cut it back for Youngie and he flicked it from behind. It was just, it was a class finish and a, and, and a great goal. I mean, they, they, had, they put together, that was sort of like an upstart club, but they put together a really good squad, that Northern Spirit side. That was like star studded. Yeah. Know, I remember like a yeah. uh, bunch of Socceroos and whatnot. So that would have been a good getting a, did you get the result that day? We did, yeah. I think I think we got up two one at Win Stadium. So uh, again, mm-hmm. like I- I- any win against these clubs was was huge, especially mm-hmm. for you know a, a minnow type setup um, mm-hmm. that we were. But still, we used to um, we went hard every game. It, it didn't matter, you know, who it was. That that was something that I really loved. That we just um, we threw the kitchen sink at everyone, which was yeah, pretty special. And when you when you won, did you get to go out afterwards? Yeah, we did absolutely. I yeah, I yeah, that's I, I just used to um, I used to be the dag on the sheep's ass end, mate. As a, as a young, you know, 19, 20 year old, wherever the old guys were going, that's where uh, that's where I'd be, um, you know. And they'd they'd look after us, and then we'd have to look after them a little bit later. <laughs> on. Yeah, brilliant. Which is and which so is uh, after Wollongong, we we. Walk us through. Where, where, where'd you play? Sorry? After Wollongong. After Wollongong. Um, so after the gong... Uh, shit, I'm just trying to think. Actually, there was... Did you do a stint at Parramatta? I did. I did I did a stint at Parramatta. Yeah, you're right. I did do a stint at Parramatta. I, actually, there was there was talk that I was meant to go to Marconi at the time. Oh, that would have been um, nice. Yeah, that, that would have been really good. I think um, JP was there coaching at the time, showed interest. I think Wollongong ended up putting a development fee on my head and uh-huh. it got a little bit outrageous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those transfer fees, you could have bought houses with those, what they used to put on players' heads. Like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to think of, it was definitely more than the um my earnings over the past the past uh, three, 
three years that I'd already played. That, that that's for sure. But yeah, it was um, it was funny because you know we we you didn't have many chances to sort of move on and and build your career. So it was it was interesting that clubs were sort of, and I I, I get from a business perspective they were trying to you know do you recoup right. something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I get that now. I didn't feel that way then, and obviously you know mm. I was in discussions with uh, Johnny Didalitz at the at the PFA from from memory. Um, but anyway, that that never happened, and ended up at, at Parramatta Power under Nick um, Nick Theo, mm-hmm. um, and he was yeah he was a gun. He again same he, I think he sort of had an eye on me from that same tournament from that under fifteen um, championship uh, back back at Park Lee. Because he he went on he went on then to do well at Wollongong afterwards, right? So he 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 and. I think no, or, or no. I think I think he was prior to that. Nick, Nick okay. Fair was 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 prior to Ron. So I think Nick left uh, Wollongong and went to Para, and then Ron Ron. Uh, okay. Yeah. Did I say Ron Smith took the yes. job? No, it's Ron 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 Corey. Ron, Ron Corey. Corey, the the, okay. the keeper. Yeah. Apologies. Ron Smith was Smudger, who who uh, I had at at, um, at Perth Glory there. But yeah, um, after that it was Parramatta Power and. Yeah, it wasn't too many appearances there. That's probably my most memorable goal in the National Soccer League was against Perth um, at uh, the old Perth Oval. I uh, took a free kick. But still now you're playing majority of your time in the forward half of the pitch. Majority, yeah. I think I think with Parramatta, I think Nick Nick Theo... Um, so we need a out. job at your left back or something. No, no, not left back. I think three, five, two, like as a, as a, like in in a five because he okay. He knew I had, I definitely had the speed and the engine to, to get up and down. So that's he really loved the fact that I could cover um, cover that ground and you know still had a decent left peg and enough enough skill to do a bit of damage. Okay. Um. So yeah, and so that's that's where Nick sort of played me when I was in the in the first team environment. Uh, but I remember, yeah, in terms of goals, that's probably the goal I'll take out of the NSL uh, as a whole was that that free kick. Um, I don't know if Petkovic was in goals at the time, but myself and Colosimo stepped up and I asked Shime, I said, Shime, can I take this one? It was a packed house. It, it always was at <laughs> Perth Oval in, um, you know, pre-A yeah, league in the NSL. With, and With the shed there behind. Like, yeah, yeah. Top, top right. And we lost 4-1, but still, shit, it was a good goal. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, and so so after Parramatta, um, where to? Did you come back? So after Parramatta, come back to Melbourne, and then we've got that. You know, I think I don't know if it's eight months or about a year, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was a year yeah. with that. Yeah, there was no. There was just basically no NSL. Yeah, there's no 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 pro footy. So that's when that's when I make my first. Um, uh, first appearance at BT Connor Reserve. So that's when I signed at Preston Lions. Uh, my co- cousin had signed there after leaving South as well in, in a similar scenario to, to me. Uh, and we both, yeah, we have a year in the, in the VPL at, um, under Zoki Trajewski at, um, uh, at BT Connor Preston, at Preston Lions in a, yeah, what I think was an unbelievable side. An unbelievable okay. side. Yeah, like Sasha Ogdenovsky at the back, um, Les Anastasiu, uh, Kukulevsky, Sapasovsky, anyway, the Emshovsky in the midfield, uh, Johnny Tverdanovsky. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave someone out. Um, Petska playing, um, Sivevsky. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's an unbelievable side. Like just okay. a lot of ta- talent, talented footballers are, are under the one roof. And I think a side that, Comfortably could have uh, played in uh, in an old NSL. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, you, you named uh, uh, Johnny Swedonovsky, who pl- did a, a short sim at Western Suburbs, my local club. So, oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. yeah so, uh, cheers to Johnny. Um, yeah. All right. And um, and so, and then it, it kicks off the, uh, was it in 05? That 05, the, yeah. Yep, we um those they, remember the the first year Reebok sponsored the shirts. Yeah, and everyone had basically the same kit. Yeah, it was very it was very generic. I think is the is is the best way <laughs> is the best way to everyone put it. had the same kit, just in a different color. 
It was very yeah. my whoever did that deal, brilliant. Just saw us sign them up. Whoever the sales agent was, <laughs> seriously, just extend their contract by another 10 years because they must have just gone to the back of the container. Uh, I still remember we got, we got jerseys. Yeah, I, I still remember them. There was that, that grey jumper that everyone had, just with the different, you know, different badge on it. Um, <laughs> I, I think Reebok um, got a, a fair bit out of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And what, what? So what was that like? Was it? Was the money? I mean, so now you're you're into the uh, as a like a, a full time pro, or you expected yeah. to be a full time pro? Could could you live off the wages, or is it? Yeah. So now now, now um, you know now, you know, fifty two weeks of the year, um, a, li- a little bit more uh, security in terms of the way the league structured. Um, so all of a sudden, yes, you you, you start to earn some type of living. Um, are you retiring? <laughs> No, you know, at, yeah. at, at the end of playing football, no, or n- not at that stage, but it was still, I think, a brilliant step uh, in the right direction, mm. uh, particularly in them initial years within the A-League, I, I, you know, and I don't want to be a prick to the current product, uh, but I, I really think I am blessed and was lucky to be a part of, you know, that initial, you know, three to five year period where, you had the gun, the cream of the crop from the NSL filter, filter over to the um, to the A League. Mm, 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 mm. And so, of your of your senior career, I suppose like at any one club, it's it's got to be Preston. And congratulations for for winning, being part of a championship winning side. Thank you very um, much. I, I still can't believe that you you got the boots on at age yeah. forty. That's brilliant. <laughs> Um, you know, most blokes your age will be playing in the over 35 somewhere, yeah. you know, for the old boys side. Uh, but you're there putting minutes in for the first team. So uh well done. Oh you can you can imagine the uh the trash and the smack uh in the changing room. Um it's you know, granddad, it's superannuation, you cop the copper short back and sides from uh from loop chair as well, you know, buckers you know, 45 going on 50. And mate, you just, you hear everything, but I wouldn't give, give it up for anything else. The, yeah. That environment, that changing, change, changing room um, uh, environment is something that, and I say this to a lot of young guys, they're like, how the F are you still playing? Why are you still playing? I said, mate, it's something that I can't, it's very hard for me to replicate in any other part of my life. Um, you know, especially when the culture is good and when you've built something over now a five-year period um, and you've built a lot of success on and off the park, mm. um, it's infectious. It's, it's a beautiful part of your life. You create memories that, as I'm sure you know, uh, last, last a lifetime, you know, mm. and exper- experiences that, um, that are very, very strong in, in, in how how you view the world and how you live your life moving forward. Because you were part of the, the Preston side that won the state one championship yeah. as well. Right. So, yeah. so it, it's not just about this championship because there was a couple of years of COVID there and yeah. you know, the league was like yeah. no, no awarded winners, etc. But so you get that experience. So, you know, you're winning games of football and you know, you're getting two, three, four, five thousand yeah. uh, spectators there at, at Connor reserve. So it, it, it's real football. It's not like it's suburban football. You you know you get more more supporters than than some A League games. Um, yeah, yeah. And like which, you know, like it, when you look at it, it's actually probably a little bit unfortunate. But mm. you know, I, I think it was one of the games against um, Western United where we we played out in front of I don't know it must have been four and a half or or, or thereabouts, maybe even five thousand. I can't remember off the top of my head and. Someone put a meme out that um, you know we played in front of more people than the the A League side did, mm. um, and again, it's like I said, it's we're probably um, nothing that we want to highlight. Uh, but if anything, I just we've got to talk to probably the work that's happened internally at Clubland and what we what we've tried to do, and that that's the one thing that that sticks with me in, in my latter years. As much as I've been able to to play, you know, get through seven or eight games, whatever it was this season and be a part of that championship, you know, to, to be a, to be a part of, 
a club, I think, that's setting the standard in, you know, what might what might be the blueprint for a national second division is is something. Definitely. Yeah, you know, is, 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 is something for me uh, that's um, unbelievably uh, exciting. And and obviously, Preston must be one of the prime candidates to be there. You know, that 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 definitely nothing's guaranteed, but you'd think no. based on its supporter base success, etc., that it has good candidature to, to present. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, I'm sure the FA will come out in due course. There'll be a, a criteria attached to it um, that will, you know, uh, require clubs to meet certain standards, you know, on and off the park, uh, also from a financial perspective. Uh, once that comes out, yeah, I, you know, I, I'd like to think that we're, you know, we're setting ourselves up to, to be a part of, some type of second division, and absolutely we'll we'll put up put our hand up, you know, along with uh, I'm sure a lot of other clubs uh, within Victoria, but I think that that's that's one thing we've always had our eye on, it, it, even maybe b- before there was um, the, before there was talk about a national second division, we sort of wanted to bring back what it felt like to be at BT kind of reserve at, at Preston, you know, once upon a time in the NSL. See, the one thing is you can't buy history. Okay. And you can't buy a supporter base. Yep. And they're, they're two things. You think about any of the new clubs that come in, it takes time it yeah. to, to grow an identity, yep. right? And, you know, that that history and, you know, years of buying a scarf or a beanie or yep. a jersey and, you know, your, your kids. And so what Preston's had is it's had generations of that. Yeah, yeah. And so... You know, there'd be three thousand, but you've you've got a, a pool of thirty or forty thousand people that you can tap into now. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. So, um, you know, if I'm sure if they, I'm sure if Preston made a finals yeah. um, at a let's say a second division final, right? There'll be fifteen, twenty thousand, yeah, yeah, supporters, right? So, but that that's where that's where you grow to. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, so of the would you say? So I said you sort of spent that five years sort of stint there at, at Perth, and and now five years or so at at Preston. Do you feel that they're the two affinity clubs when you look back at your career? Yeah, there there was um, in between that there was a a, a one year period out in Indonesia, which was um, pretty good as well. Um, that was I guess. The one year of uh, football where I got to play overseas, you know, was yes. it was it the Glamour Leagues? No, it was it was Southeast Indonesia. But again, I, I look at it from a footballing experience, and I enjoyed it. Thoroughly. What was the average? What was the average crowd attendance of those games? Oh, so, so we were quite. Uh, we were in the early thousands, so maybe you know three to five thousands. We were a smaller club, particularly in our city. We were the smaller club of of the two within the city. Uh, but every time we used to play away, you know, we're playing in front of between 15 and, and you know, sort of 25, 30,000 people. So this was something that... Um, That's where you me, feel like a footballer, right? Yeah, so, for, for, for me, you, you can't put a price on that. And I'm sure no matter, you know, which footballer you speak to, you know, whether they're on uh, 100,000, 200,000 or 200 million, you know, walking out in front of that environment uh, for me was the end game. You know, w- walking out in front of a derby game against Percy Bay, I think, at the time, and they're hanging off trees, off rafters, mm. and you walk out and you look back at the photos now, it's, yeah, it's it's an unbelievable moment, just that little moment in life that, that again, stays stays with you forever. So so when did you transition from, from being a forward to then? So pro- pro- uh, pro- probably from, so that first year at uh, Perth Glory, we're in a four four two, and I'm playing left, left midfield under Steve McBarn. And then I reckon the year after, I think with uh, I think Ron Ron Smith maybe sort of throws me into that um, left back role every now and again, but still sort of sort of left midfield or, or, or left wing. And I think by the time Dave Mitchell gets there, he sort of says, "Listen, I think you can make this position your own." Um, and then he puts me into the left pack position, and um, yeah, sort of take it. You know that that sort of next. I'm just trying to think for uh, four odd years at, uh, at at left back. 
before eventually coming, you know, now Preston left centre back to soon be left right out. Um, and just, you know, <laughs> watching, uh, watching from the from the sidelines. Just grab the chavapi. You know, yeah, so. that's it. Just just work on the chavapi, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and so uh, some some uh, other clubs there. So, but professionally, uh, so you you you're saying you're playing in was it Indonesia? Is that the yeah? yeah. And uh, so, how many foreigners were were in that? side so was, were Aussies um there, there were plenty of Aussies in Indonesia at the time so the big bear Viteski the roommate was was there at um at a rival club uh Robbie Gaspar a WA boy um who's who was a god in in Indonesia I spent time at Malang um in terms of foreigners there was Irfan Bakhtim that I used to play with who I can only refer to within the Indonesian community as the David Beckham uh, of of Indonesia, um, really popular social um, following, and he's a half cast, half Dutch ex Ajax prodigy, um, and they yeah they absolutely loved him and and and, and, and adored him, um, and his brother in law Kim was saying they were half German, half Indonesian, and they just loved it. They loved their footy, and if um, you know if you were Decent looking and knew how to kick a ball and you play professionally. You, you, of course. You're, you're, you're a god, right? Of course. Uh, but I still remember walking around the shopping centre, you know, and we were the only um, wogs in in uh, in Malang at the time, along with our uh, two co- our head coach and assistant from uh, Macedonia. Um, and there'd be girls sprinting up to me with their mobile phones, and they'd have screenshot screenshots of my son Maxim. <laughs> Um, as a you know, as a one-year-old or whatever, whatever he was. So, you know, the minute you played football there and you were a foreigner, you were you were treated like treated like God. royalty. Yeah, wow. yeah. yeah, that's a little bit surreal. Yeah. Um, and so, if you if you look back um, at, at your career now, so firstly, are, are you, you going to kick on next year? The Preston have an over thirty-fives team that you can captain. <laughs> They do, but if I'm uh, if I'm having a kick, I'm having a kick with the first. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll at least at least one, one game to sign off officially. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. At, yeah. And and then sorry, go. The I was going to ask. So, did you participate in the beat test this year? <laughs> I'm just trying to think. We must have had some testing. Yeah, I'm sure I did. I went I went through a full preseason. A full preseason. Okay. Yeah. So, what, what what would you score on a beat test if? Uh, Oh shit! I don't know. You're testing me now. I, I don't think we do the traditional beep ste- beep okay. test. Oh, look, I, I don't know. You know, I still might get into the thirteens, maybe fourteen. Oh, that's just for everybody's. That's awesome. For thirteen, that's fantastic. No problems there. So if you go around next year, thirteen, that's good. That's good enough to play. Yeah, it's it's and, and, and look to be fair, it's probably not the fit as I've been been able to save my legs during games with the top three inches versus the bottom. You know, the, the rest yes. of my body, but. I haven't lost my pace, which is the one thing that I think that's kept me playing. Um, so I'm, I'm still getting really, really high speeds, even with uh, half a hamstring on the left <laughs> left hand side. So um, that's probably the one thing that's that's kept me at this sort of half decent yeah. level. And and injury wise, I mean, how's the body feeling? I uh, look, I've I've had my issues. Definitely had my issues, particularly soft tissue with uh, with the hammies, and that that's just something that's been there. Um, from a very young age, you know, I think, you know, maybe because by, by genetics, yeah, 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 well, well, yeah, well, 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 yeah, whatever it is, it's it's something that I've um, that's been a challenge for me over, over the journey. And so, uh, just wind back, uh, Perth Glory because they they in that those initial years, I think they're the ones that had probably the most established. Um, supporter base. So going back, you yep. talk, you know, you know that that early that that late NSL yep. period, they had like what well probably was the blueprint, yeah, um, for the A League, yep. right? This uh, you know town centric team yes. that now has been sort of rubber stamped for Victory and yep. Sydney and Brisbane and the like. Um, what was it like playing in front of their supporters? I was, it was brilliant. You, you know, 
Perth's like a big town. Um, and that's what it felt like from a supporter base as well. Like you had the whole town behind you, uh, which, you which you did. It, you know, anyone that was a football fan was there. Um, so it was, it was brilliant. And you're right. You talk about blueprints. Um, you probably have to wind back to when Nick Tana, you know, originally had the idea uh, about Perth Glory. And I think they were the blueprint um, for the, uh, for the modern day um, A-League club. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was brilliant. I absolutely love Perth. Try to get the wife to, to set up shop there permanently, but with two, big families back in Melbourne. I think post Indonesia, we're always going to loop back to, um, to, to, to home. Yeah. It's always, uh, you know, getting the grandparents that's involved it. in the, in the babysitting, right? Yep. So, that's it. Uh, that's it. But, you know, when you've got three kids, um, you're both working, you need that chop out. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty lucky from that aspect. And so, so uh, you can categorically say that you're gonna you're gonna play on next year, and you're gonna at least get one senior game in. For, That's it. To do just the, the one. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Just the one. Well, it'll 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 just be the one, um, and that's all I'm after. As long as, as long as we build a strong unit again for a, you know, a, another crack at MPL two, and then you know whatever a national national second division might look like post that period. Um, as long as you know, I'm a part of it in some way, shape, or form. That's um, that's all I want from my end. And I've noticed you, you have you have helped out by trying to uh, either on their social. Are you are you working as part of organising sponsorship? What else are you doing? Yeah, there? Um, so I've I've looked after the sponsorship portfolio there uh, for the last couple of years, um, which has been nice from a learning curve again to understand what actually happens at. You know, still, we're, we probably even can't call it semi-professional because we're not quite there yet, but what it looks like. And where, uh, like you said, I think you referred to uh, a rich history, you know, a 75-year rich history, obviously coming from, from the NSL at one point. We're really lucky that we've got that to lean on, uh, even from a sponsorship perspective, uh, because our roots are very deep. Um, but it was just really nice to engage with, you know, with a, a sponsor group that's north of, you know, 100. Like, it's just r ridiculous the amount of support that we've had, you know, that we continue to have and that's growing. Um, and a great exposure for me, not just personally, but something that I was able to um, transfer and relay back to the playing squad as well, just to make sure that they know um, yes. what happens. Where the support's coming from. Yeah, exactly. I think it's nice to know or at, least, at the very least for them to understand what's happening from a commercial side and, yep. you know, the work that goes in and the, um, the amount that people, um, you know, are willing um, to give as, as, as partners is, um, is, is absolutely brilliant. Because you look at it, so, you know, most clubs have somebody that has got deep enough pockets or wants to write off a tax bill, yes. you know, even, even in a, in, now in the A League, you know, yeah. you, you think about who who the owners are, and at the end of the day, no one goes about losing four million dollars yeah. a year, yeah. right? So you, you you know you own a big mine and your tax bill's forty million, yeah. and so instead of paying yeah. um, the ATO, right, yeah. you write it off in the soccer team. That's yeah. what you do. You offset it. Football. Yeah, you offset it. <laughs> so. I mean, the, the Preston doesn't have that, but they've got, like you said, that rich yeah. um, supporter base of, you know, so you, you'd be doing very well in the gate, canteen, yeah. social events, and your sponsor's booklet's sort of like a small yellow pages. It's pretty yeah, yeah. expensive. Yeah, yeah. Do you, have the, do you have the bidding wars about who's going to be this sponsor, that sponsor? You have to think of new ideas, coaches' jackets and all no, sorts of <laughs> The more merchandise we've got, the better because everyone wants their um, everyone wants their patch. But look, like like, like you say, it's for, for us, it's a it's a good problem to have. Mm. Um, it's a challenging one, absolutely, uh, but it's it's a very good problem to have, and we're we're blessed, right? You, you, you said it. We've got um, that history we can tap into. We're very lucky that we've got that opportunity to. I took the kids down to watch Western versus Pascavale in a scratch match down at the hangar. And I caught up with Chris, another good friend of mine and a teammate, the CEO from Western United. And, 
like you said, they're building from they're building up from ground zero. So you know, I was absolutely wrapped for the lad and and the team and the, the club as a whole, um, considering it's their I don't even know exactly it's second, their third year. Third year, yeah. you know, to achieve what they've achieved, and you know, they're working on a fantastic facility. You know, they, these things don't happen overnight. As much yeah. as much as much as we'd love them to, you know, we're quite selfish as as football fans and as fans in general. I think in the Western world, we're used to clicking a finger and, you know, why isn't the Wi-Fi work? You know, the kids yeah. are complaining, the internet's down. I'm thinking, mate, you don't know what dial-up is, bloke. You know, turn it on, <laughs> and go into the shower, then, you, know, brrr, you know, all these bloody sounds you got in the background. You come out, it's still not connected, you know? So they're kissed yes. on the penis, right? But, um, you know, to, to go back to that, we're, we're, we're extremely lucky, you know, and it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, if if we can capitalise on on the last two three years, and you know, God willing, once some form of criteria um, comes into play from from Football Australia, it'll, it it it'd be great to see if we can actually be a genuine contender in in creating some history as well. I think in in Australian football, um, in in you know what might what might be a, a second division, and I think a bit of a game changer. Uh, as as a whole, I think. Oh, totally. Be, yeah. So uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit empty at the moment. So yeah, yeah uh, hurry up on the both expansion and uh, second division. Yeah. So um, tell us, Norm, you're speaking to that, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old. Yeah. Right. That wants to take their football. To the next level, whether it's you know breaking into a first yeah. team, what advice do you have for that boy or girl? Um, it's a really really good question, and I coach under 11s at you know I coach my son's team at Preston. Probably um, probably a couple of things. Uh, challenge yourself. As a, you know, don't be scared to make mistakes. Um, you know, um, your last mistake is your biggest lesson. Um, you know. Uh, I think there's a little bit of dedication and sacrifice that comes into play. You know, we spoke about generationally where, where we were, I think, before we started the recording versus where a lot of our kids are now in the younger generation. And, you know, we've got to be realistic. We're in first world Australia. So, um, you know, our kids have got it pretty good. You know, traditionally our game is a third world game. Uh, but, you know, I always tell my kids, you know, we train for – two hours total a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday. You know, it, it, wasn't, the, it wasn't the training that um, I did at Clubland that made me a footballer. You know, it was the training that I did in the morning before I went to school. It was the training that Vinnie Grella did when he put his uh, school bag up against the brick wall and was, you know, passing left foot, right foot up against, uh, up against his fence. You know, it was what we are doing at lunchtime, at recess. And then afterwards, you know, back in Walk the Reserve in Keezy, you know, we used to, we bought our own goals and 20 balls and we created our own Australian Institute of Sports. So, you know, you, you think about anything in life, you know, whether it's football, um, you know, I, I don't think the blueprints changed over the journey. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta work hard. You gotta be dedicated. There's discipline, sacrifice, um, again, challenge yourself. Uh, you know, I think a lot of kids, you know, they, I had the I'll use the my uh, my my team's example playing against Brunswick Juve and they're quite a good side. They thumped us in the um in the one of the cups that we played here locally and you know they were like oh we're going to get smashed again and I said you got to change your mindset. You got to use this game as a, as an opportunity to to learn and to to level up. Um, all right, we might have lost seven 0 last time. Let's let's try get something out of this game. Yeah. Um, so this time around, we scored a goal. So let's take that now, and let, you know, let, let's let's work with it. You know, you know, whatever whatever it might be. Um, so I know it's a very it's a very long uh, long answer to your short question, but um, you know, I think the blueprints are uh, pretty simple. Fantastic words of wisdom. Um, thank you so much for your contribution to Australian football, um, both here and abroad, um, and good luck. Um, to Preston um, in the for, for next season. Congratulations once again on your promotion um, to NPL uh, two and um, yeah, 
also good luck with uh, the upcoming submissions to the national second division. Thanks, Patka Sasha. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Hey, guys. We've come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our wonderful guest. If you like this type of content and would like to see more, how about you hit the like and subscribe button and have a fantastic day.